Hello everyone. Today I'll be demonstrating a feature called dynamic split in Reaper. And dynamic splitting is all about splitting one sound into several smaller sounds based on the silence between the contained sounds or based on the transients. This technique can be used to split your voice recordings into multiple takes based on the silence between them. Let us start right away. Okay, so as I've already explained in the intro, dynamic splitting is all about splitting one item into several separate smaller items, depending on the transients and or the silence between several sounds contained within the item. A typical use case for sound designers, for example, is that you sometimes get sound libraries where you've got one file which contains multiple takes of a sound. It's not exactly the same sound, but it's a sound which fulfills a certain purpose, but multiple versions of that one, which sound always a bit different, but not totally identical. And you obviously want to have them as separate items because you want to work either with only one of them or with all of them, but you have to split them and work with them independently. So you will have to split them at some point. And of course, you could go ahead and set the splits manually and everything, but there's a feature called dynamic splitting, which I will go through in just a second. It can also be useful for, for example, cutting this video, cause I can just get rid of silences, of breaks. Wherever I thought I'd have to retake something, I could just go there and put dynamic split on it, configure it properly, and make sure to get rid of all the stuff that I don't need, the silences, wherever I don't need them. Right, so I've got a track with one item loaded. One which called the magical stones metal container, lid opening and closing multiple times, scraping one item. So this is a sound. Let's listen to this once. It's one of those files which contains multiple sounds. And in this case, the silence between the sounds is rather short. Let's listen through the sound file once. So as you could hear, this fire is a rather low noise floor. So it's not really, really noisy. You basically don't hear anything between the sounds, which is already helpful. So let's select the item. Control, left, or right arrow key. One which calls the magical stones metal container, lid opening and closing multiple times, scraping the wall, track view. Let's press D, which is the shortcut for dynamic splitting. Dynamic split items dialog means nice length. MS means silence length. MSDB hysteresis. DPMS MSMS split points grouping at transients checkbox not checked. This is the first option, add transients. If we check that, then our items will automatically get split at transients. If you don't know what transients are, transients are something that is better understandable for sighted people. Because if you see the waveform, you always have points in the curve which stand out because they are like abrupt changes in the curve shape that you see. These are the transients. The moments where it gets from total silence to like a kick drum, which is just slapping. And this is basically transient. It's obviously visible within the waveform of the sound that you're just listening to. And all those abrupt changes between one curve form and another is a transient. It's a absolutely noticeable sound, which is not just visible, but also absolutely audible to our ears. And we can make sure to split at those transients as well. I use this rather rarely. I always go with the second option, which we will go through in just a second. Let's tap here. When gate opens, check box checked. When gate opens is what we want to split. So whenever the gate opens, a cut will be made and a split will be set. So the items were split and the next thing. When gate closes, check box checked. Closes, we do the same thing. So what this does is exactly what I want here. And we're working with a gate. In the case that you don't know what a noise gate is. A noise gate is a feature that makes sure that only certain noise gets through while everything else below a specific threshold gets removed. For example, 
if I set a threshold of minus 30 dB, then only the noise that is louder than minus 30 dB will be audible. Everything else will be cut off and will get removed entirely. Opening the gate means that a sound comes in that gets higher than the threshold, so it's louder than minus 30 dB. Closing means that the noise falls below the minus 30 dB threshold. We want to split at both circumstances. Let's tap again. Reduce splits. Checkbox not checked. Reduce splits, a function that I rarely use. It allows us to prevent further splits. If we really just want one split because we know that there's only one split to be done, we can check the reduce splits checkbox and configure the amount of splits that you want to have afterwards. So I will not check this. Feel free to play around with on your own if you want to. Minimum slice length in milliseconds, slice at 200. Minimum slice length means that an item needs to have a certain length before another split is done, even if there is a situation in which a split would need to be done as long as the item hasn't met the length criteria that's entered here, the split just won't happen. So I've configured this to 200 milliseconds right now. So our slices will be at least 200 milliseconds long. There's no way around that. They won't be shorter than that. If we tab, edit selected 200. we have a typical edit input box where we configure this. Minimum silent time in milliseconds between slices slider 100. And this is the total opposite. It's the minimum silent time in milliseconds between slices. And this is configured to 100 milliseconds, which is probably not adequate for voice recordings, because the breaks that I do between words, for example, might end up being longer than 100 milliseconds. But this file that I've just played to you is a file which contains multiple sounds, and they actually are kind of close together. So I wasn't sure about the length, and we will go with 100 milliseconds and see what happens. Edit selected 100. Gate grouping threshold. Gate threshold slider minus 50.1. This is the threshold that I was talking about. It's currently set to minus 50 dB. And I will keep it at that and see what happens. Edit selected minus 50.1. Gate hysteresis slider minus 6.0. And this is the gate hysteresis. If you don't know what the gate hysteresis is, the gate hysteresis is an additional tool which allows us to customize how the gate works. Right now we've got one threshold. The threshold is the value that triggers when the gate opens, so when it will let sound through because it's louder than the threshold, and when it closes, so when it will cut everything out because the volume of the sound falls below the threshold. Sometimes, however, we don't want the gate to immediately close when the sound falls below a certain threshold, because things like reverb tails exist. Reverb tails mean that there's a sound which reverberates and gets quieter and quieter and quieter. And if you cut it off, like, immediately, it just sounds unnatural. So the hysteresis allows us to add an additional amount of decibels to the closing threshold, and the gate will actually just close as soon as the threshold and the hysteresis are met. So right now we've configured edit selected minus 6.0 minus 6 additional dB hysteresis. So the gate will open at minus 50 dB, but it will only close after the sound has fallen below minus 50 dB threshold and minus 6 dB hysteresis. So overall the gate will only close after a threshold of minus 56 dB has been met. We will keep it at that and see what happens. Let's tap again. Display gate threshold in media items checkbox checked. This is, as far as I know, a totally visual checkbox. It's on by default. It allows visual people to see where the splits will occur before hitting the split button. So you can theoretically disable that, but it's something that is rather interesting for sighted folks to have checked. Action to perform grouping. Action to perform combo box split selected items collapsed. And this is rather interesting because this dialog can do more than just splitting items. Right now it's set to split selected items. Let's arrow up a bit. There's no other option, right? Let's arrow down. Split selected and grouped items. This will split selected and grouped items. With this will make sure that it does not just split the selected items, but also the items that are gathered with the items in a group. So it will make sure to split multiple items, even though those items aren't actually silent 
at the given location. But as long as they are grouped with the items that are currently selected, it will just work, which can be useful if you're splitting something that reaches over multiple tracks. Add stretch markers to selected items. This is add stretch markers to selected items. Instead of splitting, it will just add stretch markers, which you can further use to make sure that your project runs in this specified tempo or something like that. So stretch markers are a really, really flexible feature of Reaper, and we will probably have to go over that in several other videos. So I won't lose too many words about stretch markers here, but this is really, really useful as well. Add stretch markers to selected items and grouped items. This is basically the same that above. It's not just selected items, but also the grouped items. Add transient guide markers to selected items. The transient guide markers are something that is really useful when discussing transients again. If you want to know more about that, let me know in the video description. And that's it. We will go to the first option here. Split selected items. And tap. Set new item time based updates checkbox not checked. This is some useful stuff that I don't personally use very often. So play around with it on your own if you want to. Something that's rather useful with stretch markers and everything. Set snap offset to peak value within first. Checkbox not checked. Edit selected 50. Remove silent areas. Require splitting or gate close. Checkbox checked. This, however, is a really interesting option. Remove silent areas requires splitting on gate close. If you check that, which is the default in my case, you won't just split the items at the given location, but you will also immediately delete all the items which only contain silence. Or silent is in this case defined as sound that has a lower threshold than the value that is configured within this dialog. So it can get automatically rid of those items, which is usually what I want. So this is checked in this case. Leading pad. Edit selected zero. And we can have some leading and trailing pad. Edit selected zero. Trailing pad edit here. Pads will be considered whenever a split should be set. And whenever it detects a situation in which a split should occur, the leading pad will mean that a certain amount of milliseconds will be added before the actual moment where the split should be added. So for example, if we split 200 milliseconds before the actual situation where the split should have occurred, and the trading pad will be added after the specific split criteria has been met. So if you set this to trailing 200 milliseconds, then the actual split will be set 200 milliseconds after the split circumstances have been met. Fade pad checkbox not checked. We can also fade the pads. Create chromatic mini item from slices checkbox not checked. We can automatically take the slices and create a chromatic media item out of that. Haven't tried this before, would probably be worth an experiment, but it sounds rather interesting to play around with. So give this a go and let me know in the comment section below the video what you found this thing might be useful for. Set transient sensitivity button. The set transient sensitivity is a dialog which would allow us to configure how responsive Reaper should be with the transients. So how intense the changes of the waveform need to be in order to be registered as a transient. Since we are not using transients right now, we will just ignore that and continue. Presets button. This is the presets where we can save different settings as presets and just load them up whenever we need them. Split button. And this is the split button just followed by the cancel button. Cancel button. We will go back to the split button. Split button. And use that. But before doing that, if you enjoyed this video so far, then if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you really liked it. If you've got anything in your mind that you think I could improve, please write a comment within the comment section below the video and let me know what I should improve my future videos. Well, let's hit split and see what happened. Save project Reaper V6. So we're back in the Reaper window. Let's see how many items we've got. One which calls for magical stones metal container, lid opening and closing multiple times, scraping nine items. Nine items. Let's Play them through. Let's go to the first item and press spacebar and see what happens. One. So if we now just revert this, press Control Z. Undo dynamic split. Let's listen to the original piece. And let's see if we find something weird. So there are one or two sounds where it's definitely noticeable that we cut some reverb tails off. 
which is something that the hysteresis should prevent us from doing. But in this case, we don't seem to have it configured correctly. So let's go into the dialog once again and make sure to configure it properly. Let's press D. Dynamics, split items, dial. And let's tab until we find it. So minus six is not enough. We need more, obviously. Let's set it to minus 20 and see what happens. Six dot zero. Let's press enter, which accepts the dialog and confirms the split. Unsaved. And let's go to the first item. One which call. And let's play. Better, but not perfect, right? Let's undo. Undo dynamic split. And let's rework the hysteresis again. Dynamic image, mid edit, mid edit, edit selected, gate hysteresis, edit selected, minus 20.0. Well, let's put it to minus 50. Minus 0, 5. And confirm. Unsafe. And let's play just the last item, because it's really the one that is the most prominent reverb tear. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 6, 6, which call? Oh, we only got six items here. Because our sound now doesn't fall below the overall minus 100 decibels, at least not that often. So we actually had too many cuts earlier. Let's preview the last sound and see what happens. Ah, so now we've got two sounds in one item, but the reverb tails are fine. So we probably have to adjust the hysteresis once again. Let's give it one more try. And after that, you should have understood what it actually does and how it works. In this case, you always have to decide based on your example and situation on the best settings to use. Let's revert Undo dynamic split. and configure it again. We know that minus 20 is not enough. We've got minus 50, which is too much. Let's do minus 35. And uh, let's see what happened. We've got eight items. Sounds great. Let's check out the eighth one. Yeah, this sounds great, doesn't it? The seventh? Seven. Awesome. So this seems to be the perfect setting for this sound collection, which seems to contain eight sounds, right? One thing that you need to make sure is if you have ripple editing enabled, which is another topic that I should probably cover in another one of my videos, removing the silence will automatically move all the other tracks as well if ripple editing is set to all tracks, which really messed up some of my projects already. So make sure to always have ripple editing off or activate it on purpose if you really want to. And this is all about dynamic splitting. It's really useful for everything related to voice editing. It's really useful for splitting several sounds. If you're a sound designer, want to split your long sound file with multiple sounds into individual files, it can be really useful in many situations actually. And now you know how to use it. If you've got any questions or any things that you think I missed here, then let me know in the comment section below the video and let's get the discussion started. I'm always happy to hear from you, seriously. Thanks for watching the video. If you wanna get in touch, then check out my Twitter profile, link in the video description, or I've said this quite a few times already, but write a comment in the comment section below the video. Now that should have been it. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye-bye.